Hi everybody, it's Thursday and we are at Now You're Cooking for our weekly demo. Tonight we have Chris Toy with us. We're gonna be doing some fun stuff with Chris, but let me tell you what's coming up first. Um, next week we have Diane, our uh, colleague Diane is gonna be making Portuguese kale soup with linguiza or chorizo, it's really yummy. And that's from the Victory Garden cookbook, if anybody out there remembers the Victory Garden. Yes, you remember the yeah, Victory Garden? Um, great show on PBS. Um, she's also gonna be making cheddar cornbread with that. The week after that, the 21st, we have Susan Horowitz from the Beth Israel Congregation. And for Passover, she's gonna be making chocolate caramel matzah toffee because it's Susan, you can be assured that it's going to be very colorful and delicious. And then on the 28th, this is a really important thing, so listen closely. The 28th, I'm gonna be making Vareniki, Vareniki, I don't know how to say it, but they're gonna be delicious. They're like pierogies, but they're the Ukrainian equivalent. And we're gonna be doing that on Thursday the 28th. And then Friday the 29th, Saturday the 30th and Sunday the 1st of May, 10% of all of our sales for those three days, we are going to be donating to a humanitarian aid organization called United Help Ukraine. Um, and they provide medical assistance, they uh, provide assistance for warriors that have been injured or killed, and also to the families of um, warriors, soldiers who have been injured or killed. Um, as well as other humanitarian aid for people that are displaced from their homes. So don't forget that weekend, really important weekend, Vareniki on Thursday night, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 10% of all of our sales are going to United Help Ukraine. So keep that in mind, and we hope to see you that weekend. Um, meanwhile, tonight, we are doing Vietnamese food. We are doing pho. P-H-O, pronounced pho, correct? Yep. And summer rolls, Vietnamese summer rolls. And the reason we're doing this is because our friends at Ellsworth Adult Education, hello Ellsworth, um, have been reading this book, The Best We Could Do, which is one of the books for the National Endowment for the Arts Big Read selections for this year. And it's a really cool book. It's a graphic memoir, illustrated memoir. It's a quick read, but it's really, really interesting. Beautifully done. The pictures are lovely. The story is really interesting. And I highly recommend that people read this if you haven't already. Um, and in the book, they talk about pho. And so we are doing this um, for our usual friends that watch us, but also for our new friends at a uh, Ellsworth Adult Ed. So welcome to everybody who hasn't been on our demos before. And take it away, Chris. All right. Well, thank you very much, Louisa. So, um, pho, P-H-O, but pronounced pho, has an interesting history. It actually was uh, invented in the late 19th and earliest 20th century. And um, it has both Chinese and French roots, which is very interesting to me. Uh, the, the French roots actually come from the French soup called pot of feu or pot of fire. And uh, it's a, it's a beef-based noodle soup. And uh, the Chinese roots for that are the noodles. And um, there's a type of Chinese rice noodle, which is pronounced fe, not pho or pho. But so kind of mixing in the Chinese and the uh, French Indonesian um, words with obviously the, the, the Vietnamese culture, we end up with pho as the soup. So we're going to use a traditional uh, beef base, but you can use vegetable, you can use uh, chicken, and ideally your soup base, uh, the, the broth, would be something that had been boiled for a long period of time. It would be a bone broth. So we have bone broth here tonight, and um, this is just simmering now, and to that, I am going to be adding these 
four ingredients. And what the thing that one of the things that makes this uniquely Southeast Asian is fish sauce, which is a fermented sauce. It smells like rotten fish, <laughs> but it's really, really tasty. And um, I'm going to put in about a tablespoon. There we go. And I've got ideally it would be um, a quart or maybe a quart and a half possibly two um, of this bone broth. It's fine if it boils down because it gets richer. And to that we're going to add some soy sauce. So there's about a tablespoon of soy sauce. So we'll make it a little bit salty. And there's um, there's some spice in uh, in pho, and usually it's uh, a mixture of spices. The one of the key ingredients is cinnamon. Another is star anise, and there's usually some ginger uh, that goes with that, and cardamom. So what we're going to use is we're going to use Chinese five spice powder, and um, this has those ingredients and sometimes a couple more. But I'm going to put in about a teaspoon. Whoa! Good thing I had my hand there. <laughs> Although it would have been good. But we're going to put in about a teaspoon of five spice powder. And we'll try not to spill any more into that. And we're going to put a little sweetness. Just a tablespoon of sugar. And let's give this a quick stir. So this is simmering. It's already been cooked. And what we're going to do now is we're going to filter this through a coffee filter. So we'll get all those nice flavors. If you want, you, you could let this um, you know, simmer for a little while. But uh, those ground up spices uh, really um, put their flavor in pretty quickly. There we go. All right. And we're going to let that just kind of drip through our coffee filter. And while that's happening, let me just uh, warm this up, put it on low simmer. And I'll be coming back to that just to keep pouring that, that broth through. So while we're waiting for our broth to, um, to, to filter, I'm going to uh, make, make a nice appetizer, uh, a summer roll. And uh, the summer roll um, uses something called rice wrappers. In the stores, sometimes they're called summer rolls, sometimes they're called spring rolls, but you'll know that you're, you've uh, got the right thing when you've got these kind of translucent wrappers and they, they kind of feel like plastic. But what you want to do is you want to take your uh, wrapper and you're going to lightly just wet that. I've got uh, some, some water in a pie pan here. And we just want to get that. We don't need to leave it in there. We just want to get it wet. And what will happen is this will, this will soften up as we, as we use it. Just get that all the way in wet. And then we're just going to put that down onto a surface. And what I always do, just to make it easier on myself, I'll leave a little bit of it off the edge, so I'll have I'll, I'll have something to grab when I when I go when I go to wrap this. All right, I'm going to wet my fingers a little bit, and just make sure that that's all wet. Also, by wetting your fingers, you'll keep that wrapper from sticking to your fingers. So so wet fingers are good. So our our ingredients that we'll be using. Uh, we'll have some cooked shrimp. So these are the small salad shrimp. 
We've got some really tender lettuce. We've got some bean sprouts, some carrots. Uh, we could put in scallions. I don't know if I will yet or not. We have some uh, chopped up um, cilantro. You can also use uh, mint. You could use um, parsley. You can use basil. So, you know, kind of chopped up um, herbs. And we're also going to be using these uh, rice noodles. And the way you just reconstitute these rice noodles, and this is how they come. And uh, again, they kind of feel like plastic. So you can see these are another form of this. And you just kind of soak them quickly in some warm water. And probably in a minute or two, they'll be ready. Take them out, drain them, and you'll be ready to go. So my wrapper has softened up. And I'm going to start off by about a third of the way down. I am going to put four of these little shrimp, just like that. There we go. And then a leaf of this lettuce. And then to that, we'll add some of these shredded carrots or julienne carrots. And you want to be careful not to overfill because you want to be able to wrap this up pretty tightly. But just kind of spread out some, there we go. All right some bean sprouts and some cilantro. All right. So here's the edge of this. So you can see it's turned pretty soft. So I'm going to pull this up and over. Put my fingers again. We're going to take the side just to close that up. We'll take this side, close that up. There we go. And here we go. We're going to roll it right up. Just like that. And I see I put that shrimp on first because, you know, it gives it nice color. There we go. There. And there is your your summer roll. So eating these summer rolls, um, I've made a, a, a little dipping sauce. And you can make this as mild or as hot as you want. But here are the ingredients. We've got some hot sesame oil. If you don't want the heat, you can use regular sesame oil. Here's our fish sauce. Some soy sauce and some ketchup. And for sweetness, we've got honey. And if you want to kind of go all down east, you could use maple syrup. All right. And I would say, um, you know, probably, you know, one part of these three and probably two parts of the honey for the sweetness and three or four parts for the, uh, for the ketchup. And then you just kind of mix all those together and uh, you would just kind of dip these guys in. I won't torture you by eating them, but this is here. Um, you, can, um, you, you can make these in advance, not too long in advance, maybe an hour or two in advance. Put them on a platter. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want them to touch one another. If they touch one another, they'll stick together. And you'll, you'll have to eat them <laughs> stuck together because if you try to pull them apart, they'll, they'll break. But they won't stick to, to stick to your platter. All right? So if you were here, I'd say, are there any questions? Um,
you can use you know different uh, different noodles, lots of different fillings. Think about salads and things like that. Avocado would be really good with this. Cucumber, summer squash, things like that. All right. So let's go back to our broth. All right, and um, I'm going to pour the rest of my broth in here. There we go. All right, and uh, I'm going to use this. Uh, there we go. All right. So I've got most of the um, most of the five seasons powder is filtered out. Pho is usually a clear broth or relatively clear broth. So that's why I'm using that filter. All right. So let's. So I I I want the I want the broth to be to be hot. What we're going to do is soften up our noodles. And these are thicker noodles. And I'm going to we'll make two bowls to start with. All right, so I've got about four ounces of, um, of noodles here. There we go. Maybe a little more. All right, so the thicker the noodles, the longer they're going to take to, um, to soften up. You don't want to boil them because you're not trying to, uh, you're not actually trying to cook them. You're just softening them up. All right, so here we go. And those noodles, uh, you can get those in the international section of uh, most supermarkets. I think we have them here at Now You're Cooking, right? Not the noodles. Not the noodles, all right. So we're just going to make sure that those are submerged. And while we're putting our bowl together, those will those will be softening up. So it's it's best to eat uh, pho in a in a wide, rather shallow bowl, because we're going to be kind of putting different ingredients in there. Uh, let's just talk about our ingredients for for a minute. Um, some of them are are similar to our uh, summer roll. We've got some some bean sprouts. Um, we've got our shredded carrots. Here we go. And by the way, um, ever since I've uh, I've discovered this uh, these julienne peelers, I, I love these. You just just like that, and it just makes these great strips that you can use. We've got some slivered up onions, some scallions. Um, we use both the white and the green part of the scallions. Uh, the white part has a stronger flavor and the green part has a milder flavor but you know it has some nice color. And we're also going to we're going to go easy. We're going to have jalapeno peppers. Um, the traditional Thai, Thai uh, they're called bird's eye peppers. They're about a hundred times more spicy than the jalapeno peppers, and they're they're red and they're very small. But if you can, I couldn't find any, so that's another reason that we couldn't use them tonight. But you'll just slice those up, take the seeds out. Um, you take the seeds out mostly for the texture. Uh, contrary to popular belief, the seeds are not hot. They're not hotter than the regular part of the pepper. The hottest part of the pepper is the inside flesh. And then, um, and then it goes from, you know, from there to the outside. But the seeds themselves don't have a lot of the capsaicin um, in them. So what we'll do, and I think I've got all that. Yes, okay. All right, so our noodles. Are almost there. Um, another ingredient that um, that we often use is we use beef, and um, this is this is rare roast beef. 
And I'm just going to slice those into some bite-sized pieces. And if you, if you want to be super official, um, you, would, you could get, it would be raw, very thinly sliced. Um, I think we call it Philly steak cheese, um, shaved beef. And you could use that. And if you did that, though, what you would want to do is you would put that uncooked beef in the bottom of the bowl. And then when you pour the, uh, the hot broth in it, it will actually cook that beef. What we're going to do is we're going to just kind of slice this into bite-sized pieces at an angle. There we go. And uh, sometimes they'll also use a brisket uh, that they've cooked for a, for a long period of time. So it's very, very tender. But we're just going to go with some roast beef. This is not all for one dish, by the way. <laughs> there we go. All right. So let's Yeah, so these are al dente. I'm just going to I'm going to test one just to make sure. Yep. All right. So we'll put this in our bowl, just like that, and then we can arrange our ingredients. So let's um, let's put. There we go. So there's some of our beef. Let's um, put in some sprouts. Our carrots. There we go. Our peppers. I'm going to sprinkle the peppers. So we want to get that nice spiciness all over the place. And when I put in um, scallions, what I usually do is I, I bruise them a little bit as I put them in. And that just kind of distributes the flavor. And here's some onions. So we've got... There we go. All right, so here's our broth, nice and hot, that's what you want, you want it nice and hot, and we'll just pour that right over it, okay. all right, so there's our hot bowl of pho. Taste this. So you can kind of see that that hot broth cooked, even cooked, cooked the, uh, the, the roast beef even a little bit more. Very rich bone broth. I just also want to mention for anybody that had to join us late, you can watch this video again on Facebook. It'll be there forever. And we will also get it posted on our YouTube channel as soon as we can. All right. And I can't help myself. I'm going to... Oh, go for it. Where, where's the lime supposed to be? Oh, good point. Let's Thank talk you. about the lime. pointed that out. There you go. Um, so the lime is is a um, is for flavor. So just uh, roll that lime a little bit to uh, release the juices inside, and then we'll just cut a sliver of that. There we go. Okay. 
and it's amazing how much juice gets uh, released when you uh, when you roll it like that. So there we go. That was good. Give me a good excuse to uh, try it again yeah. with the lion. Any finishing words for us this evening? Um, I think that's it. Um, have fun doing this, or maybe you're doing it as, as we've been talking. Um, all of my um, um, classes, I guess this is a class, it comes with a lifetime warranty. Just contact me at christoy.net at gmail.com if you have any questions. And if you don't get to christoy.net at gmail.com, um, you can always contact us here at Now You're Cooking because we are always in close contact with Chris. We have his number. Um, so you can contact us. Thank you so much. That was awesome. If you haven't read the book, The Best We Could Do, please read that. It is really fantastic. I got it at my local bookshop. I'm sure you can get it on that one that's named after some river in Brazil. Um, but you should go to your local bookstores and see if you can get it. Um, and next week we have Diane making some soup, Portuguese kale and sausage soup from the Victory Garden Cookbook. Um, throwback for our older viewers. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here tonight, Chris. And thanks to all the people in Ellsworth that joined us. See you later. <laughs>